All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about a free app called Snapseed. This is going to let you edit your photos. This is a very cool app made by Google. It gives you a huge range of op options on editing. Check it out in the App Store. It's compatible on most devices. Go ahead. I've already downloaded it, so I see the iCloud button. But if you haven't downloaded it before, you should see Get, and it is free. So I'm going to tap the cloud and download it now. You can see the app is downloading on my home screen. I'm going to give it a second to finish up. Okay, and we're in. So right away, Google Snapseed opens up with uh, kind of helpful tips on the first screens. Very, very easy to use. The plus on the top left of the screen allows you to open images. You can easily share images to other apps and to Facebook or social media. Tapping on the photo that you're actually editing allows you to compare it anytime with the original photo. And then there's a range of tools along the bottom that we can scroll from left to right to, to actually be able to use. So this is very, very cool, very helpful. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up a photo by just tapping on the plus. I can select my camera, my photo library, or I can paste an image. For now, I'm gonna go right from my photo library. I've got a photo selected here, I'm gonna open up. And I can say use. Now I'm gonna go through the tools fairly quickly because I wanna show you exactly how to use them, but there's a lot of very fun things right away. I'll start out usually by tuning my image. You can swipe up and down to actually view what enhancement you're working with and then swiping, swiping left to right will actually increase or decrease the selected enhancement. So what I mean by that is swiping up or down brings your menu and then whatever enhancement we've selected, whether it's brightness, ambience, contrast, or so on, swiping left to right will decrease or increase that setting. And you can adjust those settings accordingly. I personally love this tool because it lets us change the warmth of our photos as well as increasing shadows which may be darker areas of the photo without compromising the lighter exposed areas lowering or increasing saturation your contrast so that's tune image next we can straighten our photos very easily by swiping left or right we can rotate the photos as well. Cropping our photos is very easy in Snapseed with a free range crop or pre-selected ratios. And the fun tools that we have with Snapseed are black and white, vintage, drama, and then HDR escape. By tapping on the star, we have pre-selected black and white settings, which will automatically adjust the photo. The circle on the right will let us add a color filter. And you can navigate through these on your individual photos to see how it will affect and manipulate the photo that you're working with. Vintage allows us to add a vintage tone or style to our photo, and there's uh, texture strength we can adjust, we can change our saturation, increasing or decreasing saturation, as well as the style strength. And by tapping on the star we have a range of styles so we can actually see there are quite a few and that each style has different textures. By tapping the square we can change the texture of the photo And by tapping each texture again, it will actually shuffle where the textures are on the photo. Very easy, very fun to use. Now, Drama and HDR Escape are very similar. Drama is like a, like a toned down version of the HDR Escape. And it does decrease the saturation by default, but I can increase the saturation as well as select various other pre-selected drama settings, which are a lot of fun. And finally, we have HDR Escape, probably my favorite feature on Snapseed. Uh, if you've ever done HDR editing on the desktop using multiple exposures, this is so easy to use and makes 
such an incredible resource out of your devices. On my iPad, I import photos using the camera connector and I'll import raw photos and actually use the HDR scape setting in my phone to change and adjust the photos to HDR in my phone or my iPad. And there's pre-selected, four pre-selected settings you can choose by tapping on the star. In each one of these settings we can increase the intensity or decrease the filter strength. Again, swiping up or down as before and then swiping to the left or the right. And depending on what subject you're working with in your photo, each setting will work differently. For example, if you're shooting people, uh, you definitely don't want to have a high like nature or strong HDR effect because it's going to make the skin tones on them look very nasty and very poor. So sometimes going with a more subtle effect, maybe bringing down the filter a little bit will be nice. Or sometimes if you're doing a scene like this, maybe having a very intense you know, HDR effect, like a strong setting, and then we can pull up our saturation a little bit. That actually might look really good because here we're, we're working with nature and, you know, kind of having it be a little bit intense actually is pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and then show you another tool, which is kind of like the icing on the cake with Snapseed. We've created a very, very cool looking image here and done a lot of nice changes, but you see kind of the top area of the photo is still a little bit washed out and I want to bring back some of the detail. I'm going to go to my tool, Selective Adjust, and it actually allows me... It's a three-step tool which allows me to add specific control points where I can adjust brightness, contrast, and saturation by swiping to the left or right, just as I've done before, but it only manipulates that specific area. I'll show you what I mean by tapping on the plus, and then I'll go add an area, a control point, to the top of the trees here. You can move this around, and it will actually give you a pinpoint area if you want to adjust specifically but I'm just going to select basically this general area and grab a big chunk. I can decrease the brightness here and you see that brings back a lot of detail in the trees that was lost a moment ago when it was overexposed. Same thing along the lower end of the trunk here. I can select just this area and just slightly bring that down. Maybe I want to increase the contrast and it looks like the saturation is a little low here. When you're working with raw photos you have more control over the exposure adjustment than you do with JPEG. You may notice if you're editing JPEG, if you grab a blank area and you try to darken it too much, you lose, you actually lose color or lose tone. You see that? It looks really, really nasty. There's not a lot that you can do there. And so an overexposed sky, you kind of have to just deal with. That's, that's part of getting the settings right actually on the camera beforehand. Now, I've added a setting here that I don't really want, I don't really like. I can tap on this control point and it gives me kind of like a right-click menu of cut, copy, paste, delete, and reset. I'm going to go ahead and for you know the sake of ease here, just hit cut because I don't want it. It removes it and resets that area. And then I can continue to drag my other areas around as needed, increasing or decreasing the area. And once you've got a bunch of adjustments on the screen, you may find that it makes it pretty difficult to see your photo. You can tap on the eye and it will give you the view of your photo just by itself without your adjustments and you can see, great, that looks awesome, I like that. We're gonna go ahead and save it and we're all done. After this, if there's any other effects you can add, you can add a tilt shift, center focus, grunge effect, which is another filter that's fun, Retrolux, another fun filter that has several options. And I, I seriously recommend just exploring these because each star has its own, you know, properties. Each star has its own settings and its own filters and its own enhancements. And you can tap on them to shuffle the specific settings. So one, you know, style two here actually has several variations of what it can look like. And we can even adjust the properties of these by saying we want specific textures we want leaks, we want it to have dynamic images or dynamic, you know, light leaks and so on. And this is a lot of fun control that you have over the photos and over these filters that make them unique every time you want to use them. We can even hit the shuffle and it will just give us random selections. So go through these, Retrolux, Grunge, Tilt Shift, Frames, 
see which one you like for your photo. Every photo is going to be different. Everybody's got their different preferences and Snapseed really accommodates that. We've gone from our original photo to a pretty spectacular HDR photo in just a few seconds and we can then save this photo by tapping on our share button right to our camera roll, Google+, email, social media like Facebook or Twitter and even if you have other editing apps you can open this particular photo in Instagram or if you have other apps that work with photos like Facetune which we'll be talking about in another episode. Box if I want to be sharing my photos as well as AirDrop and we can save that very very easily.